happy with uh, veterans in my line of work of construction. And it's a very big thing. You know, it's like you can't say the military was in on it, just like you can't say the government was in on it. That's too inclusive. You know, my mailman is part of the government. I'm sure he did have nothing to do with it. Uh, the, the, your rank and file, your rank and file soldier, they don't know a lot of times. Although the the awareness of 9/11, what really happened, is spreading in our military, and uh, there was a, a a few big purges, the largest in history, unprecedented historically. Obama fired, you know, from the president, uh, you know, having uh, generals. military generals, you know, majors, colonels. All kinds of brass fired, and a lot of us have thought that you know they were getting rid of people who wouldn't fire on American citizens. I don't think so. I think that a military coup was forming. Uh, you know, talking to these people, they're pissed. I mean, they're, they're they are really pissed off. We have more uh, suicides now than battle deaths. You know, uh, more more soldiers lost to suicide than the, than the combat deaths. And it's been this way for quite a few years. Um, they they don't they can see how the military is being used and abused. Certainly, without question, we have people that we can name and we have evidence against that we want to prosecute in the court of law, who are you know generals and and high-ranking military officials, who obviously were part of this. Uh, but but to, you you can't condemn the whole military is saying everybody was involved, everybody knew. That's not true. Most of them are brainwashed. Right. And mm -hmm. and so, you know, th these are like the the fuzzy details that you need to make clear about who knew what when, who was in a position to do something to make this happen and then cover it up and those kinds of things. And we've got quite a few folks. Richard Clark, uh, you know, he needs to hang. He needs to hang high. And, and there's others to go with them that, that mm, had Bush to... Bush and Cheney. Bush and Cheney. They had to actively step in and stop the system from working or the fighter interceptors would have taken off and shot down the planes. You know, it's, right. it's ridiculous that anything got anywhere near the Pentagon, which is the most highly protected airspace on the planet. Uh, you know, it goes no on and on. Either. Well, right. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I don't know. Where he, the, this has been a, a contentious point with uh, the the uh, truth movement. I'm glad to hear that we're on the same side here. <laughs> I think it's interesting. Yeah, um, I, I'm a I fan of. Um, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I yeah, sorry to interrupt, but I think it's interesting. You know, they they say commercial airlines. This mic is on. There was no commercial airline, as I don't believe, uh, in in New York. And the Pentagon, I believe, the witness, uh, the one employee witnessed the only, I believe, commercial airliner that was used, and he witnessed it pull up and go straight, pull 180 degrees straight up right before the missile hit the Pentagon. The only right. other one was a uh, was a, um, a military aircraft that hit the first building, supposedly. Every other witness in downtown Manhattan, Manhattan says there were no other planes. So, you know, you can you can kick it around and juggle it all you want, but the bottom line is, no. And what crashed in Pennsylvania? Probably a drone. Well, I'd like to converse more with you on this. We'll have to do it outside the call. Um, but yeah, my stance has always been that no plane hit the Pentagon, and I'm a fan of the Citizens right. Investigation Team, the work that they did on the North Sitco flight path and the flyover that you mentioned. And also yeah. that planes actually did hit the towers, um, and you know that is a contentious point also. But you know there were an awful lot of people that saw it, and a lot of people got pictures with their phones. And there's um, one I think. Yeah, there's well, a clip that shows the second plane supposedly it was fabricated, of course. The second yeah. plane hitting hitting the second tower. And mm -hmm. it's funny, they jerked it down right away after they put it out because if you notice you look real close and see in slow motion the cockpit of that plane protrude out the other side of that tower and there is absolutely no way in hell. Yeah. Lightweight aluminum right. aircraft. 
would have penetrated yeah. through well, that building. We'll, 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 we'll get we'll get there. we'll get to dis- we'll get to discuss more outside the call. Right. Um, there, there's an awful <laughs> yeah. lot to this. There's the physical evidence, the engines and the landing gear and such that was found. Um, that the, were uh, yeah, that weren't there. <laughs> didn't belong to the planes they were supposed to be. They they switched the flights right. out. We don't know what happened to the people. Right. Good, good. Okay, so I hope I've answered the question. I don't want to monopolize the call. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Michael Cork. Thank you, Michael Gore. Uh, Michael Gore, another question for you. Um, yes. Do you hear me? Okay. Still, there is a huge doubt about the reason of collapsing, uh, collapsing the third skyscraper, WTC-7, which was not hit by a plane. What do you think about it? Yeah. Well, I think the most damning evidence in that is um, Larry Silverstein himself was on television, and he admitted, although he slipped because he's he's an investor. He purchased it, what, less than a week or two before they pulled this off, and he was the one who made the slip, although they made the decision to pull. That's a that's a controlled demolition term, pull. That's exactly what the ha- what happened to Building Seven, just like all three of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it violates the laws of physics. You yeah. know, e- you have two you have two choices: either the laws of physics were suspended on 9/11, or they were brought down by controlled demolition. Nothing right. comes down yeah. at free fall speed unless there's nothing in the way. Right. Yeah, exactly. Unless, of course, the the um, the skeletal structure instead of uh, 16 inch thick steel iron girder beams were toothpicks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it would it still wouldn't be free fall. The toothpicks exactly. would provide some resistance. <laughs> exactly. Right, yeah. right. It, yeah, long yeah. out at every Mhm. Yeah. Okay, but uh, here's a question, why uh, would anybody or why the government or why the terrorists, I don't know, whoever try to uh, tries to destroy the WT7. I mean that that building. Uh, what's the importance of that, and why uh, you know would they do that? Right. Uh, can I answer? Sure, Michael. Yes, sure. Okay, thank you. Well, the buildings uh, had permits applied for and denied to bring them down. They were um, uh, what, what's the word? Real estate uh, dinosaurs. Real estate white elephants. Nobody wanted them anymore. They were constructed before the internet, and they didn't. They weren't set up for today's business. They were mm-hmm. full of asbestos, which is a dangerous chemical they use for fireproofing. And the asbestos abatement, which is something I've done a little bit of, I've been around a lot in my line of work, is very expensive. It, it would have cost hundreds of millions of dollars to do. Um, uh, they, they, I, when people ask that question, why, I use the analogy of a move on a chessboard. You know, it really helps if somebody plays chess and it can, the light goes off and they understand. W- one single move can do many different things at once. It can attack and defend and open a line, open a, a, a rank or a file and, and stuff like that. So it, it was a multi-purpose move. Mm-hmm. They they got the excuses for the war. They got rid of the buildings. When they took out Building Seven, they had to drop all kinds of uh, legal cases that were Wall Street banks. Um, we had a, if you may have heard of Enron, was one that that did go through at least partially, and then they had to let it go because all the records were destroyed, and there was a whole bunch more on tap ready to go. Conveniently, right. The, it was the largest uh, office for the CIA outside of Langley, Virginia. And it was yeah. also a headquarters of the Secret Service. And nobody sneaks e- explosives, tons of explosives, and rigs an entire building with the CIA and the Secret Service in it, unless they're in on it. Mm. Um, yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So they, they got their uh, police state at home somewhat, not quite as thoroughly as they wanted to, thank God. Large and and they got their, their wars, yeah, their wars abroad. They got the best enemy that the war machine could ask for. They can be anywhere they say they are. You know, they're not necessarily a real army and uh, a, real, a real military force. 
Right. If they if they want to say that they're in uh, Buffalo, New York, they're in Buffalo, New York, and they go there. You know, if they want to say they're, they're in your... uh, Panama, they're in Panama, mm -hmm. and, they, and that's where they go. They're so, under your bed. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they're in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I was uh, going to ask the ne next question for Manuel, uh, but I'm not sure if he's still here. Manuel? I'm still In regards to so many, um, so many things involving 9-11, where it's, it's very easy to say that the official story that was given to the public um, was manipulated to appease the public mm -hmm. and it it almost seems like those um, those certain people in power um, they either know that they can get away with uh, such things if if people are in a state of um, where they don't really are, they're not paying attention to what's going on or they're almost disassociated or disconnected um, from people and and the message uh, in the news that is being presented to them, um, and in regards to the whole idea of certain people being given information, um, I think information is something that you have to you have to seek out for yourself. Um, there are people that are given information um, that may be born into certain positions. Um, and as it always has been in history, with uh, knowledge comes power. So I think it's, it's up to the people to basically determine information for themselves to help empower them. Uh, and then this way, um, when situations do arise where people are manipulating uh, false flag events or situations to guide the public's opinion, the public will be more educated and won't be so easily uh, led to believe a story that is clearly full of holes and, and wrong on so many levels. Uh, this kind is like my I ask people, do yeah. you still believe in the magic bullet theory? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I, I would caution against using the um, no Jews were killed in the attacks because they were. <laughs> there were yeah. There were Jewish yeah. people killed. I think that this rumor has some validity. I think that maybe a call did go out and a whole bunch of people didn't show up to work. Uh, it's an undisputed fact that the Zim, Z-I-M-M -M -M shipping company broke their lease they'd had for like 30 years and, and moved out well before the attacks and uh, paid a huge fine to do it you know and that that company yep. is b half owned by Israeli interests and half by the Rothschilds uh, so I mean that's foreknowledge you know uh, that they wanted to get the heck out of there um, and and it wouldn't surprise me at all you know if something like that happened but when you make a blanket statement like no Jews were killed in the towers and they all were warned to stay home that's patently false and it undermines mm -hmm. all your other good information. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Nathan. No problem. Teresa. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, Teresa, after this incident, government officials claimed that they had uh, apprehend some people connected to the event, and even they found a passport remaining um, out of those, out of all those explosions and destructions. Yet we didn't see any names or official findings about the people who were responsible. What does it mean? My answer. Uh, Michael, could you please answer after Teresa? Uh, I'm sorry. What? Sorry. What was that? Uh, could you please um, answer me after Teresa? Oh, sure. Yeah, okay. Thank Teresa. you. Thank you. I didn't hear Teresa. Cool. Thank you. Teresa? Yeah, Michael probably has more information than me. But very, very, very quickly, the media and the news started bringing up Osama bin Laden maybe too fast. And also, um, 
Netanyahu got on our, our national TV and within weeks started talking about Iraq. So they already had people that they were uh, and on the news every single night. The emphasis was Arabs. They kept saying, I mean, immediately they start, started talking about Arabs and, and Muslims. And um, um, so, I mean, I don't, I mean, the other gentleman probably has more details about it, but there were, there were plenty of pictures and names thrown around, around at least generically. And all of it was, was about, um, Muslim terrorists. I mean, even when there was the Oklahoma bombing um, years before, where it was an American Christian extremist, for days and days and days, all the newspapers said it was terrorist. I mean, they're just too fast. Just too fast. Boy, having a real hard time hearing you.